That seems like a long time ago now, um, but it's a, uh, for the most part, a good memory. Um, you know, really feels though that our guys were, uh, were locked in, um, challenged them. Just, you know, it had been eight months or so since the last time that we'd uh, been able to play and, and really focused on our run defense and then taking care of the ball. Those were two, two overarching areas that we just had to see improvement. And, you know, our defense uh, just came out and, and did just that. I think they had um, 23 yards on 32 rushes um, and uh, really made a, made a statement there. Um, and uh, offensively, we only had 68 total plays and we turned the ball over. Uh, the one time, um, and we, we really want to eliminate, um, you know, all, all turnovers. Um, so there's a lot of ways of looking at that, you know, with 68 times touching the ball. Um, uh, it's better than turning it over two or three times, but uh, still want to, want to be better at that. And um, thought our special teams um, uh, had done a real nice job as well. You know, our, our kickoff return, um, we had to get past the 50 and hadn't done that last year. And so there were some things overall that we were, that we were pleased with. Um, really disappointed uh, in the moment in the second quarter. I felt as though that we relaxed, and it's just not something that we can afford to do ever. Um, the, the positive, and that's what we addressed at halftime, uh, and then our guys responded. You know, we weren't perfect ever. We weren't perfect in the second half. Um, but there was a different feel and attitude mindset on the sideline in the second half. It wasn't, hey, we've won this game and we're waiting for the clock to tick down. Um, you know, we were playing and, and, uh, and into it, and that's how, you know, we have to be each week. So, um, so yeah, again, it seems like a long time ago, but, um, you know, it was a, it was a good, good evening and a good start for our football team. Paul Fricano picks up Mid-American Conference West Division Special Teams Player of the Week, ties the school record with eight PATs. Uh, as a, a registered professional kicker coming in, you have to be excited about this for both. Yeah, I mean, the more PATs, the better. You know, that's a lot of them. And uh, obviously expect for him to be 100% uh, with PATs, and so, um, you know, we need to keep scoring touchdowns, so he's going to continue to have those opportunities. Um, but yeah, Paul, um, you know, won the job during camp and um, it was his first game and um, missed a field goal, but he hit a field goal and then and had those kicks. So, um, you know, Dylan Mulder was, w w was a great kicker for us and, you know, in every area, we don't want to take any steps backwards and so he's got some, some huge shoes to fill. Um, yeah, talk about Todd Porter, you know, leading off the offense and a big offense performance, you know, coming out the gate from what you see from Todd and uh, what you're pleased by what you saw. Yeah, so it was, uh, it was a pretty good night for Todd. Uh, we expected a lot of pressure, and so a lot of what, um, you know, Coach DeBoer prepared him for was to identifying pressure and getting us in the right protections and in the right plays. And so uh, in, in some ways, um, the, the things that people don't really get to see just watching the game, the nuances of, of correcting plays and checking and whatnot, um, he did a pretty good job uh, doing, and uh, we we're really pleased with that. And, you know, I tell you, we had the, the errant snap early, um, and that would have been a tough save for him. We had another one early that went a little high, and this, this was a big moment just for me, you know, with him being quarterback, is that um, he got up and he, he fielded the ball, um, probably could have thrown it out into the flat, you know, as the, as the play was designed that way, but didn't make a bad play worse. Uh, you know, he just took care of the ball, he tucked it, got a few yards and uh, lived to play another down. And, um, you know, for his first game, um, just the composure that he showed in that moment to me was as big as anything he did all, all night. Oh, that, that composure, that comes as a surprise to you? Or have you seen that practice? No, not a surprise. Just before, you know, you, before you've taken a live snap in a game, um, you don't completely know how anybody's going to respond to the lights and, you know, to an opponent and, the unexpected and all of that. So I uh, thought he did a, did a pretty good job with it. Sure. Now, will he be starting this week, or is that still a decision? Yeah, that's, that's uh, the very beginning of the game. People will know who's, who's uh, starting the game. Um, another guy on offense, Shaq Van, had a pretty good performance. Um, we talked last week about how you, you know, you're not surprised to see him be as good as he is. Um, so with that performance, does that kind of fit the expectation, or was that you know, something that you were hoping to see from Shaq? Uh, absolutely. You know, you're still in the first game. You're, you're hoping that everybody's going to perform. But 
um, we're we're not surprised at all by that. Um, if you remember me saying it, you know, from from last year to this year, as we're just bridging the, the gap, you know, because it's game one. Um, what we felt in terms of program and then specifically offense is that we couldn't take any steps backwards in terms of the one-two punch with Darius Jackson and Shaq Van. I just mentioned, um, you know, our kicking situation, and so that's a pretty good, you know, one-two punch. And um, didn't play all the backs that we have, but I mean, it was one of the first times that Ian Erickson really, you know, played significant uh, amount of time on offense and and whatnot. And people have seen Blake Bantam as a returner and as a slot and as a running back, um, you know. And so I think the the story for us was, um, you know, our other backs um, stepping up and having uh, good games as well. How do you think a win like this? You know, obviously a big win, you know, as opposed to wins that are maybe closer in margin going into a game against an SEC school. How do you take a win, big as this was, uh, and go into Missouri and kind of get ready for that? Well, I get, in, in some ways, you, you, you don't find out as much about yourself as, as you want to um, in a first game, to be honest with you. You know, when the, the score was what it was, I mean, um, you know, so in some ways, I don't – say this with any disrespect, but just through the course of the game, it was 21 nothing at the end of the first quarter. And, you know, so we haven't been tested in a way that we're going to end up getting tested. Every football team will get tested uh, through the course of a season. Um, so um, really pleased with, with how we played, but I think there's still a lot to learn, you know, about our team. The thing that, that, I, that I do know is that uh, I, I think that we're going to handle, um, you know, tight situations well. Um, yeah, I mean they're 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 a really good football team. You know they play really fast on offense, and essentially, almost everybody now is is no huddle. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you're an up tempo team. And even if you're a tempo team, uh, you know there's there's usually some variance, and they'll they'll vary things as well. But their their norm is is super fast. You know, just as fast as you can go. Um, I think they had 106 plays. It was over 100 plays, you know, last week. Well, we had 68, um, so that'll give you, you know, some insight into it right there. And um, so, you know, I know, you know, with Ike directing our defense, identifying personnel, identifying formation, getting aligned um, quickly um, and, and correctly, so that we can then play football is is a big part of this week. And then defensively, obviously, it's you know. Um, well documented that they've been a, a incredibly talented um, and productive defense. Um, I mean, they were phenomenal last year um, and have most of those guys back. Um, their defensive coordinator was promoted to to be their head coach, um, and uh, I mean they're 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 really good. Uh, I, for you, you know, not playing a game in two seasons, how big was Friday for you? Oh, it, it was huge. I mean, it was just great to be back out there with my team. And um, all the preparation that I put in mentally and physically, I feel like I'm back better than ever. And, you know, I, just, I can't wait to get out there again. You know, so. Now moving into a game, you know, the last two years you've watched your teammates play big SEC schools, you know, Florida, LSU. How big is this Missouri game for you? I mean, it's big, but I feel like we're, we're better prepared in all phases, special teams, offensively and defensively. And I feel like just overall, we have better team chemistry. And I feel like that's going to be able to really help us this weekend. And um, I guess my last question for you, um, just looking around at your defense, I'm sure there's a few new faces you know, for you. What's the mood of your defense this year? You know, yeah, we've talked about it last week with other players, but what's, what's your take on the, on the 4 2 5? How does it feel? How does it run? I mean, it feels great. I feel like everybody, as far as depth wise, one, two, ones, twos, and threes. Everybody has the defensive down, defense down for the most part. And uh, like Mike Brown said last week, I mean, we come in everything. Every practice is workers, you know, and we go in, we strap up, and we get to work, and we come every day and attack it with a 1-0 and mentality to win a day, win a practice, win a game. Mike, you were a guy that in 2013 led the team in, in tackles. And, of course, the, the hardship that you've had the last two years with the injuries. How much has that motivated you to, to come back maybe a little stronger than you were a couple of years ago? Yeah, it's been a huge motivating factor. I mean, all glory to God. You know, he brought me back through everything. And 
you know, I'm back better, stronger than ever, mentally and physically. And um, it just feels great to be back out there with my team. And all the support staff that I've had has been great, starting with the coaches, having faith in me, and keeping, keeping with me throughout this time, my family, uh, everything, my girlfriend, everybody who's had my back. You look at it, uh, it's a different perspective when you sit on the sideline and have to, to watch other teams play. And has that made you maybe able to read the defenses a little more differently than when you were under Glasgow? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's just my field awareness is, is much higher than back in 2013. I mean, I feel like if, as a defense, as an, as an individual, we're, we're to we've totally grown. And we're a lot better now. You look at yourself now, you're, you're in grad school taking grad classes, and uh, it, it's got to also be quite rewarding now that you've, you've got the undergrad degree and working towards that, that next degree as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, to be honest, I never expected to be uh, in master's or getting a master's and to be in grad school. and. And now I have the opportunity, you know, I just thank God for everything I've gotten. And do, do you think, you know, having that time, those two years off, has it helped refine your focus too, maybe, as both a football player and as a student? Yeah, it definitely has. I mean, it's really just brought everything to fruition and just really helped me see the importance of taking everything uh, that you get and making the most of every opportunity you get and really preparing, you know, prepare like a pro for everything. So, Creighton, your, your thoughts on that? He was a guy that uh, walked in here when you were hired, and he was kind of that leading tackler that we looked at. And quite honestly, you haven't been able to see him in the, on the field in game action. What, what do you think is the fine skin that we have? Yeah, I would say this about Ike. I mean, I had, you know, we got some spring practices and, and, and whatnot, but I have seen him. I've seen him in, in the most difficult. Um, football situation that you can be in, right? And that is going through two different injuries in back-to-back -back years that have prevented him from playing a single play. And so I know um, uh, a lot more about who he is, um, his ability to deal with adversity, his character, his perseverance, his drive, his determination. And so it's absolutely no surprise, you know, that, uh, that he's having success and will have success on the field. You know, we reminded the team on Thursday night that he carried the wrench out for our first game last year, you know, after two years of missing seasons. And, uh, you, know, um, you know, things can happen for a reason. People like, like to say that, you know, and if he'd played the last two years, he wouldn't, he wouldn't be with us right now getting his master's and, and leading this defense right now. And uh, those were a grueling two years, but the way he handled it, I mean, he couldn't have done it any better. And uh, so it's just, uh, I think it's exciting for everybody in the program to, to watch him out there playing. And Coach, would you say, you know, injuries like Ike's and, and O'Connor, those guys, the way they've dealt with that, would you say that's broke off on the team as a whole? There's no question. You know, it's, it, the, the thing about it is, is that when you haven't gone through it, there's, there's immediate attention, you know, to guys like that. But then it just becomes the norm. And so... The reality of it is, is that, you know, it's like, hey, Ike's been hurt. And, and the intensity of that sort of fades from, from most people. But it doesn't, you know, for the guys who've been injured. And so I think that, right, guys who'd gone through something similar, I mean, they, they have that empathy and it sticks. But, and it's not anybody's fault, but you, you, you sort of move on. Um, and, uh, but whenever, you know, folks are reminded of it and whatnot, and you think of what Ike's done for two years and in OC, and there are a number of guys, you know, um, it's, uh, it's, it's hard, <laughs> you know, and so it's just nothing but much respect, you know, when people are able to handle it the right way and, and put the team before themselves during those times. I mean, OC continued to lead. I mean, Ike was still a huge part of our football team these last two years, even though they weren't able to play. Um, and, uh, you know, that speaks volumes about a team first mentality, which is, which is hard in reality to do. Mike, last question for you. Football, of course, is everybody's ultimate goal to continue on. But if that doesn't pan out, what, what do you hope to do after school? Um, I want to get into uh, personal training, you know, train athletes that want to, that have league dreams, you know, and want to go to the next level. So that would be my next phase. Kind of Coach McKeever, your mentality, he, that he kind of helped you out the last few years? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, like that. Perfect. Now we get another Good. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Cool. Okay. Thank you.